Welcome to this most holy of nights, this ancient watch service in which the faithful stayed up keeping vigil, awaiting the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This most holy of nights, when those who have prepared for baptism during the season of Lent enter the waters of baptism to join their lives to the death and resurrection of Christ. I'm Pastor Diane Lofman, and I'm joined this evening by Pastor Associate Ann Beck and our pastoral intern, Logan McLean Strike, as we celebrate this night, the Passover from death into life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. You are invited to light a candle, a small bowl of water, and if you have it, your buried Alleluia banner. Our service begins around the kindling of the fire of creation and the blessing of the Paschal candle, which is marked to represent Christ and the light of the world. Just as the cross symbolized for us the death of Christ, now this Paschal candle stands for the risen Christ. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, to Christ belongs all time and all ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion now and forever, this year of 2021. Amen. Amen. And now you are invited to throw your scorpions into the fire and say, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? to light your candle and join in the chant as we light the Paschal candle. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. 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 Rejoice, sing, exult, celebrate. Jesus Christ is risen. Rejoice, O earth. Sing choirs of angels, exult in glory. Celebrate the divine mysteries and let our homes resound with joy. This, this is the night in which ancient times you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel, and led them through the sea. This is the night in which the weight of our wrongdoings has been removed. This is the night 
We are rescued from evil and the gloom of separation and are renewed in grace and restored in holiness. This is the night in which breaking the chains of death, Christ arises from the depths of despair in victory. O oh, night truly blessed. This is the night of which it is written, the night is as clear as the day, and then shall my night be turned into day. The holiness of this night puts to flight the deeds of wickedness, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn, casts out hatred, and brings peace and humbles earthly pride. Therefore, on this night of grace, receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving, for the light and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of candles, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by the sharing of this light. This is the night in which heaven and earth are joined, things human and divine. We therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle, burning to the honor of your name, will continue to dispel our fears and guide our way. May Christ, the morning star, find it burning, that morning star who never sets, that morning star who, rising from the grave, faithfully shed light on the whole human race. Together we say, Amen. Amen. We gather around the fire, sharing our ancestral stories that tell of God, of the God who shaped us and freed us to be God's people. The first story is a very familiar one. God is a liberating God. The Red Sea from the Spark Bible. It was a long journey leaving Egypt. The Israelites camped on the shore of the Red Sea. People were feeling really nervous. Moses squinted into the darkening sky. Had he heard something, something in the distance? Moses shook his head slowly. He did not trust Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to keep his promise. Do you think Pharaoh followed us? Aaron asked. Moses stood listening. We will see, Moses said. We will see. Moses didn't have to wait long. Soon, a growing cloud of dust rose up in the distance. A rumble of horse hooves thundered towards the travelers. They could see them clearly now. Hundreds of Pharaoh's chariots charged towards them. Hundreds of soldiers followed with orders to bring the people back. We're trapped, somebody yelled. A strong wind began to blow. Cries went up from the people. Moses, they shouted. Have you brought us here to die? Don't be afraid, Moses told his people. Stand firm. God is with us. Moses gripped the staff in his hand. Prepare to move out, he shouted into the wind. Where, Moses? Aaron said. There's no place to go. Through the Red Sea, said Moses. God will make a way. Moses stood at the edge of the shore. He raised his right arm. He stretched his staff over the white waves. The water trembled and divided. The wild wind roared. Soon a wall of water on the left and right. Dry land appeared between the walls. A safe path to the other side. Move now, Moses ordered. How strange it must, it must have to felt to step on the sandy path. How scary to feel the spray from the water waiting on either side. Would God save them? Would God keep the promise to Moses? In the morning, Pharaoh's army, army stood on the Red Sea shore. They saw the Israelites safe on the other side. Soon, chariots groaned and soldiers cracked their whips. Pharaoh's army moved slowly across the rocky, sandy path. They will catch us, a young woman yelled. Watch and wait, said Moses. Moses once again held his staff over the walls of waves. Tons of water came trembling down. Horses, chariots, and riders were all swept into the sea. From the safe shore came the sounds of singing and dancing, led by Miriam, Moses' sister. Sing to the Lord, the Israelites shouted. God has saved us. The second story is one that reminds us that God breathes life into us, raising us up 
making of us a community of people connected one to another. Hi, we're the Abwee family. I'm Beth. I'm Brian. And I'm Ella. And we're going to be reading Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, the Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. Mortal, can these bones live? O oh Lord God, you know. Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bones to its bone. I looked and there were sinews. Of them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them. But there is no breath in them. Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds. O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The third story is from the prophet Zephaniah, whose ancient song of praise is filled with the promises of God of restoration of all things. A Song of Joy. Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives you victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. As on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renowned in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. 
You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, for St. Louis River, for the great lake Gichigami, for this land of 10,000 lakes. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this sacrament. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This day, Flora Jade and Drake Philip are baptized in these waters, and we join their parents and sponsors in making these baptismal promises. To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace throughout the earth with the church. With them, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? As you dip your fingers in your bowl of water, make the sign of the cross upon yourselves and respond. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Do you promise to support Flora Jade and Drake Philip and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share, growing in faith, spreading God's love, and gathering in community. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Early on, the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead." Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have taken him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The good news has been shared with Mary Magdalene and all of the apostles, with saints throughout the centuries, with our ancestors in faith, we join them in proclaiming, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia.
We've made it to Easter. We have been strengthened, carried, and raised through another year, fed by Christ through word, song, by glimpses by one another, and by this bread for the journey. We eat it with joy and thanksgiving. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Um, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, raised up to be the body of Christ in the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.